start winning at the races with Daily Racing Form's new Mobile Pass performances, featuring exclusive buyer speed figures and expert analysis and selections. Go to DRF.com slash best and get the power of DRF in the palm of your hand. Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, kicking off a 50-cent, $500,000 guaranteed pick five pool at Keeneland with the grade one Madison race number five. Let's throw up the field. Phillies and mares going seven furlongs and some pretty talented ones at that. Chad Brown has Guarana, the number five, even money. She had a really strong three-year-old campaign, Mike. And I think she's kind of found her niche as a one-turn horse. I know she won the Coaching Club American Oaks going a mile and an eighth last year. But the way she won the acorn and the way she won her comeback, I think seven furlongs to a mile is right in her wheelhouse. Yeah, I agree with that, too. And it does feel like she's one of those um, fillies who, for who shorter is better. I'll tell you what, though, Dan, she's even money on the line. Um, this is a very, very good field. Absolutely. Mia Mischief, we know what she can do. She is a grade one stakes winner. Bell's the one, an explosive winner last time out at Churchill Downs. And Amy's Challenge, you can't discount her for this reason. Let's throw up the time form U.S. pace projector. We know one thing about Amy's challenge. She is very fast out of the gate. And if she can clear off in a blue bar time form U.S. scenario, which favors horses on or near the early lead, Amy's challenge, who is a bit questionable at the seven. She just failed to hold on in this race last year. She might be able to take him down to the stripes again. Uh, yeah, I mean, she is a fast horse, and it does look like she's in position here to, to make the lead once again. Um, and then we'll just see if she, you're right about the seven. Maybe we'll see if she can get the distance. Um, it's also, you know, one of those situations though where Garana, who she won't be on the lead, Dan, but she's fast in her own right. She's going to be right up close. Diamond Crazy, the number one, 50 to one on the morning line for this Louisiana bred that's won four out of her last six races against weaker competition. And she was beaten for a $50,000 tag, two starts back at the seven furlong distance. I like the way she won last time out. I know it was only a starter allowance race, but she showed some moxie in that spot. Yeah, listen, I'm, I'm a fan of this horse. Um, I, just, I just can't see her winning a grade one stakes race. Wildwood's Beauty, the number two. Well, she's a Florida bred who's a multiple stakes winner against fellow Florida bred. She's also multiple graded stakes placed in her career. She's okay. Let's watch her last race against Florida breds. It's the musical romance. She's even money in this race, and she kind of fell a little bit far behind in the early portion. She's going to come with a little bit of a run, but this Ladies Island, Ladies Island is fast, and Ladies Island had a big jump on Wildwood's Beauty in this race. Yeah, Ladies Island on her on her good day is very fast, and she's run some fast figures as well. I, I'm, a, again, of Wildwood's Beauty. I'm a big fan of hers. The seven furlongs is a good distance for her. But she's found herself in a really tough spot, and she settles for second quite a bit. I was just going to say, eight times second in her career. I believe she's been second in five out of her last six starts. The three is Sally's Curlin, and Sally's Curlin just pulled off an upset in a grade three stakes race at Gulfstream. Let's watch the Hurricane Birdie. They cut her back off the layoff going seven furlongs, and she got a big pace to run at. You're going to see Sally's Curlin on the outside come with a run. She's in the clear now. She's really firing. This pace helped her out, but let's not just say she was completely pace dependent. She's won now four out of her last five races with a lone loss the one time she went a true two turns in the fall city. Yeah, it, it feels like, you know, we were talking about this with Guarana earlier. Um, it feels like this is what she wants to do, too. The longer one-turn races. I like the finish she put in in that race. That was Wildwood's Beauty. We saw again running second in that race. Sally Sur Curlin ran really well in that race. Um, she's a little slow for this field. I mean, it feels like she's going to have to take a step forward and run her fastest race to win. But if there's pace in front of her, she will run at the end. And if you believe the time form U.S. pace projector, maybe she's in a little bit of trouble because she might not get that kind of pace up front. Although with Amy's challenge in the race, you got to think even though she's going to get to the lead, you might be an uncontested lead. She's probably going to be going fast. I don't know how you can slow her down. Princess Causeway, the four one two starts back with a 91 buyer speed figure. It was a nice way to kick off her four year old campaign. She just didn't fire last time out in the winning colors. Could you find an excuse, Mike? No, I didn't. Um, she got outrun back off the pace in there, but so did the winner. Bell's the one. They were both out of it. This filly, you know, stayed on the rail the entire way. She got a clean trip. She just couldn't impact that race. And it just feels like things get tougher for her in this spot. 
Guaran of the five, the even money morning line favorite, five starts, four wins. The only time she lost a two turn race, the grade one cotillion, a race in which she made a mid move into the hottest part of the pace and was out finished by a very good one in street band off the layoff. I think that's exactly what they were looking for. Mike It was a sealed sloppy track. She sat just off another horse. She took over when ready and she was geared down late. Yeah, it did sort of look like a perfect prep race. Um, just a really nice return effort where she didn't have to work that hard. And you already know that she's got grade one quality um, based on her three-year-old stuff. Um, you know, if you're worried about sometimes horses shipping into Keeneland, you can worry about that. She broke her maiden here, so it feels like the surface is no problem. There's just a lot to like about this horse. Unique factor got it done last time out at Churchill Downs after dropping out of the winning colors. She got a good setup, I thought. They were going pretty quick for that condition last time out, and she was able to make a, a sweeping run to win it with an 86 buyer. She's going to have to run faster. Yeah, she is. This is just a tough spot for her. Um, I, I, like, I thought her winning colors was okay. She was no factor in that race, but I thought she ran fine in there. And I liked her win last time. You're right that there was pace for her, but she got bumped and forced out to the back of that field early. Um, she was wide around the turn. I really liked that win from her, Dan. I don't know what it means when they step her up into a race like this, though. She's going to have to really improve. Mia Mischief is a grade one winner at seven-eighths of a mile. She won the Humana Distaff last year. She had a three-race win streak snapped last time out in the winning colors. She was up close to the pace that day. She tired. It was a race where Bell's the one came from off of it to win. Do you think the pace was too hot for her last time out? Do you think maybe she regressed off of a big, big effort in the carousel? Yeah, you know, I don't know what the difference was there. She just didn't run her best race for whatever reason, and I don't want to give her the pace excuse because Break Even, who was setting that pace, easily outfinished her to be second in there. So what, for whatever reason, she just didn't run her best race, and that's not the first time that's happened uh, to Mia Mischief in her career. But you know this, Dan, when she is good, she is really good, and she will be very, very hard for Guarana beat if she shows up in here. Bell's the one really likes Keeneland. Winner of the Raven run last year. She got back into form, going turf to dirt, winning the winning colors from off of a solid pace. Seven furlongs is her game. It was nice to see her run a really fast race last time out with a 98 buyer. Can she stay within range of the pace if it's not fast and still kick on home? I think she's more of a one run closing type, but she's pretty good. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I think she does need the right setup if she's going to win this race. Um, but, but And we'll see if she gets it again. You have a speed horse to her outside, and Guaran is not going to be that far away. If they start racing early, things could set up for this horse, and she is good enough to beat this field. Amy's challenge on a little bit of a losing streak. No match for Mia Mischief. Mia Mischief ran right by her in the carousel last time out, but she's been given time to recover since that race. She's run well fresh in the past. Ryder switched to Joel Rosario, who I think is just going to put her right on the front and see how far she can go. Yeah, we'll see if she can get loose in this race and take advantage of it. I was a little skeptical. Not that, you know, she's not a really nice mare because she is, but Mia Mischief seems to handle her every time they run against each other. Um, and Mia Mischief may not even be the horse to beat in here. Let's take a look at our top picks for the grade one Madison, kicking off a $500,000 guaranteed pick five pool. We're both going with Guarana. We both got the same exacto. We're getting 5-8. Yeah, I just didn't want to go against her, Dan. I mean, I don't feel like she has to win this race at a short price, but, but she is really good. I think she's going to get the right trip in here, and I'll just take her on top. But I don't think she's a cinch in this race. I don't think she's a cinch either, but boy, she has a lot of upside potential. And I think, like you, she's going to work out a pretty decent trip. But this is going to be a nice test for her against horses like Mia Mischief and Bell's the One. Guarana, the morning line favorite, the likely post time favorite, and our top pick in the grade one Madison, a race with an approximate post time of 318 Eastern. Good luck.